Hi guys, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Aryan Kapoor. Um, I'm about to become a senior at Winville High School. And just right before I start, I just wanted to thank SSF. You know, this opportunity has been really great for me. And, you know, all of us really had a really fun time working with each other. And so, yeah, I'm just really excited. So just to begin, uh, this is my topic. It is transcranial direct current stimulation. I'll be talking about what it is, how it works, and if it's a potential solution to bipolar depression. So just to introduce it a little bit, so basically what bipolar depression is, it's a specific phase of bipolar disorder. Um, misdiagnosis is really common in bipolar disorder. So unfortunately, when people have bipolar depression, you know, sometimes they are diagnosed as uh, have just having plain depression or just having bipolar. So it's misdiagnosis is really common in this. Um, for bipolar depression, a lot of the symptoms include burden of illness, high suicide risk, hypomania, uh, etc. And uh, currently it's 9.3 million American adults are, are being affected with bipolar depression. So this is why we need to put so much research and effort into this. Um, currently only three treatments are FDA approved. And unfortunately with these treatments, there are really bad adverse effects. This means that, um, so for example, one of the treatments is called OFC and OFC has clinically significant weight gain, like around 65% of the people that use it have clinically significant weight gain. And they also have a tendency to go into hypomania, higher suicide risk. So the treatments aren't the best. And monotherapy antidepressants are not recommended for people with bipolar depression, which is why we need to be talking about different treatment opp opportunities. So what I aim for through this is that I aim for bringing awareness to a type of treatment that has been used already for neurocognitive behavior and to, de to demonstrate the high potential it has in treating people with bipolar depression. So just a little bit more about bipolar depression. It's super severe. It has a high relapse rate, around 60 to 80% of people relapsing occurring two years after a manic or depressive episode. So this is why I should be researching this. So this brings me to my actual moduality. This is called transcranial direct current stimulation. I'll be referring to it as TDCS throughout this presentation. Um, so basically what TDCS is known for is altering the function of neural systems, function behavior. It's a completely non-invasive brain, mod brain moduality, which means that um, it's not invasive. It's not invasive at all. Um, it's an application of a weak current and it targets the cortical areas of your brain. And it's two scalp electrodes, one anode, one cathode, and it mediates synaptic plasticity. So what synaptic plasticity means is that um, your neurons have an ending to them and that's called the synapse. And so it is said with people with bipolar or bipolar depression is that they don't really have a good control over their synapses or their neurons. So this kind of mediates how fast your neurons are firing. So this can influence psychiatric symptomology. So my hypothesis is that TCDS will be highly effective in treating patients with bipolar disorder and provide a better opportunity. The methods I will be using is I have a timeline, so I'm only using materials within the past 10 years. Um, I'm excluding people under the age of 18, so 17 and under will not be included in this. And I'll be looking at a lot of different reviews, such as literary, systematic, meta-analysis, etc. So let's begin. So systematic review number one, this is seven identified studies. This had around 46 patients. Um, depression scores decreased significantly with the medium um, size effect after the acute phase of the treatment. Um, and my p-value is 0 0.003. So what a p-value is, it shows credibility one and it shows significance. So with your p-value, it shows statistical significance, whether um, your treatment group had actual uh, an actual effect versus the controlled group. And so with this, you can clearly see that, you know, TDCS is responding to depressive symptoms and it's really good. So this moves me to my clinical trial. This was a randomized sham controlled, sham meaning, you know, a controlled group versus an active group and double blind trial. Um, participants included 59 with either type one or type two bipolar. And they were also in that major depressive disorder, which is bipolar dis depression. So this they measured with HDRS 17. So HDRS 17 is a Hamilton depression rating scale. So what they had done is it's kind of like a questionnaire. And so they had done this questionnaire with their patients before and after treatment just to kind of measure how their results varied. And it showed significant superior improvement. So you can see my p-value was 0.01. So again, it shows that statistical significance. And one thing I'd like to point out is that this chart in the bottom left, it's um, your adverse effects. And the biggest thing with TDCS that I really love is that the only significant um, adverse effect was skin redness. So, you know, it's really great that, especially working with bipolar patients, that there is really slim to none transient adverse effects. Some of the biggest characteristics of TDCS is that you, if you look at the left graph, 
only within two weeks of using TDCS, you can see how their uh, depression rating skills are decreased significantly. So that questionnaire is sca scaled on a zero to five, a five to twenty-five scale, and you can see within the first two weeks that that active group had dropped significantly only with you only by using the treatment for two weeks. And then if you look at the right, uh, um, this kind of shows the cumulative response. So um, it shows the long-term effects of using this treatment. And you can see how it's sustained and increased over time. So this leads me to just depression. So we talked about bipolar and we talked about bipolar depression. What about major depressive disorder? So this is one of the most prevalent psychiatric disorders worldwide. Uh, around 20 to 30 percent of patients do not respond to the standard pharmaceutical interventions. And this, it has also said that there's altered activation patterns in those uh, same areas, those cortical areas that I was talking about earlier. So let's take a look at this trial. This was 130 participants with um, major depressive disorder, and they also had an active in a sham group. And this had 20 sessions over four weeks, which means that they had around five sessions per week. And it was double-blinded, it was international study. And this was also showed uh, significance in the treatment period, both with people with major depressive disorder and people with uh, bipolar. So what is else? What, like, what else is there for the future of TDCS? So we talked about bipolar depression. We talked about bipolar. We talked about major depressive disorder. I wanted to look into neurocognitive effects and how that could potentially be um, affected. And so this was a triple masked trial. It had 130 participants, and they were optimized to both high and low dosages. And again, with that five sessions over four weeks, and there were significant improvements in this as well. So this means that even people with um, problems with their working memory or selective attention, like this could genuinely affect and improve um, people's neurocognitive effects, which is really interesting. So this leads me to my conclusions. Um, TDCS definitely does have positive neurocognitive effects in bipolar depression, maybe your depressive disorder, and even the neurocognitive abilities. Some of the advantages of TDCS is that um, one is very cost effective treatment. You know, it's really expensive, but the good thing about this is that it's very in it, it's very cost effective, um, easy to administer. It's pretty simple, honestly. Um, it's portable. It's very extremely mild transient adverse effects compared to the other FDA um, treatments. It's tolerable. It's non-invasive. It's great. So this leads me to what is in the future of this? Like, what can I look forward to? What are some things that are missing in research? So measuring results, I think one thing that needs to be a little worked on is like, is there, are there better ways to measure results other than just a questionnaire? Um, again, you know, diagnosing is really hard still in modern day society. Um, so I think that's just one thing that we need to be looking at a little bit more, the proper way to diagnose people, the proper way to measure the results. Um, Additionally, a sustained clinical response. I had showed you that cumulative response graph. Um, although it was only up to six weeks, I was wondering if there is even more research about um, this treatment being available. And like, I wanted to see the effects after a couple months or maybe a year. Um, again, there's difficulties with this population group. Working with bipolar patients is it's hard. Sometimes they don't come again and again for treatment. So that's something to consider. And which TDCS mo modularities are actually the most effective? So this is transcranial magnetic stimulation. So it's a little different, but um, you know, just something to consider which um, moduality works the best for which type of patient. Um, and I think the one biggest thing that I've gotten from my research is making this an at-home remedy. So this means that you include this into your daily routine. Um, you use this, you know, five, you use this five times a week for 10 minutes. And you can, as you can see, you know, if you use this within two weeks, you'll have better results. And yeah, so that, that's kind of the biggest thing I've taken from this is that maybe we can create this as a home remedy for patients. Here are my references references and my thank you. So thanks for my parents, Dr. Pierre. Does anyone have any questions? What do you think the best way going forward would be to uh, test the efficacy of this and to get better information so that maybe insurance companies are willing to pay for it? Right. I think that's a really good question. Um, unfortunately, I think right now that working with people with different disorders, it's really hard to measure that efficacy. And it's really hard because as you can see in some of my graphs, even the sham group had decreased. So that's even placebo. So placebo even has an effect in this. So I honestly think that there needs to be more consideration in that, that um, maybe placebo has an effect in this so we can even 
um, work towards working, like if we don't want to use a certain treatment for it, even if we tell them that there is a treatment working for them, hopefully that they'll have you know a better effect from that. I hope that kind of answered your question. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Any other questions, guys? Okay. Thank you. Thank you.